Episode 7 is my best episode so far in X-Men 97. It just overtook episode 5 from being my best episode. This episode felt exceptionally relatable from the heartfelt funeral scene for Gambit to Rogue's arc and her mourning process. It was so touching to see the team behind her in this scene in Mexico. And this episode gave us the best Rogue we've seen in years. I noticed a pattern with episodes of X-Men 97. Is it just me or do they alternate between episodes that are really engaging and visually stunning and the ones that are a bit less captivating in comparison it's like the creators are doing oh this episode is going to be dope and the next episode is not going to be as dope as the previous and then the next episode is going to be dope again and so on i don't know i noticed this from episode 3 and i just hope episode 8 is not going to be dry in comparison to episode 7 considering the fact that episode 8 is going to be the beginning of the three part story arc which i really can't wait to see at this point in this episode they really expanded on their world building we explored different locations like the mexico city i like seeing the cultural representation of how mexicans mourn their loved ones it was just so cool to see these desert hideouts that rogue just flat out destroyed the snowy hideout with captain america and the bunker the graveyard size for gambit's funeral it was just emotional to see the x-men grieve and pay homage to gambit for the last time every member of the team were present except for rogue i actually mistook this white-haired lady for rogue but that is not her jubilee questioned why rogue wasn't present for gambit's funeral i mean of all barriers to miss out is gambit's and wolverine made her understand that different people mourn their loved ones in their own different ways grief's a lonely war rogue's gotta figure it out on her own we also got a look at Roberto's mansion and of course the aftermath scene of the Genosha massacre. It was just sad. The X-Men and the mutants are trying to rebuild from the Genosha massacre remnants and at the same time mourning the lives of their loved ones. The UN withdrew their support for mutants due to political reasons because helping mutants will potentially make them lose some of their human supporters. This made Cyclops realize that the X-Men and the mutants are actually on their own and he regretted being delusional to think that humans will grow to accept the mutants. Beast also realized this during a conversation with Miss Tilby that seeking validation from humans was their first big mistake. Cyclops now got the point in Magneto's warnings that fighting for humans isn't just worth it. This episode brought out the best of Rogue I've ever seen. X-Men 97 is really elevating every character and giving them the respect they deserve, which past adaptations often fail to achieve. I love how Rogue was determined to stop Trask and Guy Rick by herself. She just got tired of all the hate and the unnecessary killings of the mutants. To be honest, this is what they should have done like way long time ago not caring about the humans since they don't care about them. Gambit's death made Rogue realize this and she went crazy. I never knew Rogue was this powerful for real. You killed those sugar. Now you get me. This somersault in the air was electrifying, like this shot right here is screenshot worthy damn. Rogue set out to track down Guy Rick and Bolivar Trask since they are the humans responsible for creating the Sentinels and along the way she met Captain America who provided her with the information on Guy Rick's whereabouts in a facility in Mexico City. Rogue immediately wanted to take actions before Guy Rick escapes again but Captain America wants to play by the book and suggests they follow others to avoid public scrutiny. That approach will definitely slow down Rogue's vibe. She knows Captain America will try to stop her. What she did afterwards was funny as hell. She took Captain America's shield and tossed it out in the wild so that looking for it will keep Captain America preoccupied and that way he will not have time to intervene in her mission. <laughs> like that was so brilliant. Meanwhile, Bolivar Trask is already trying to redeem himself because Sinister is now going crazy with the Sentinels. He reached out to the X-Men to meet up with him so that he can explain all that is going on. Personally, I'm not buying into his redemption because it was a matter of convenience if you ask me. Bro got scared and now wants to redeem himself. <laughs> no, not for me. When the X-Men got to trust, they found him on the verge of committing suicide. Bro was about to jump off a building. He told them that Sinister was building a new type of sentinel worse than the Godzilla sentinel in Genosha. He didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Therefore, he wants 
to kill himself. Just before Trax jump, Rogue held him back so that he can provide any more information he has. But my guy was out of information. Then Rogue legit dropped him. I was shocked because Rogue is now brutal, guys. The rest of the team wanted to play the sympathy game by asking, "Is this who we are now?" I'm like, this is what you guys should have been doing all along. I liked that Wolverine was in support of Rogue. His response is basically what they should have been doing way long time ago. What we all wanted to do. I mean, it's time to be brutal to these people because they don't care about you guys the way you guys care about them. Even though I'm a human, but in this case, I'm with the X-Men. <laughs> The twist that came with Trask jumping off took me by surprise bro because it turns out Sinister and Bastion are building a prime zombie sentinel and this time is no more going to be a robot but it will now be injected in humans which activates when one dies and unknowingly for Trask he has been used as an experiment. When Rogue dropped him off from top of the building he died and turned into a prime sentinel and started attacking the X-Men. This was the climax of the episode for me we got an incredible battle between the zombie sentinel and the x-men morph turned into quicksilver to battle the sentinel and it was so dope to see quicksilver bro like i really really love how morph brings out cameos of other characters during his fights gene and the rest of the team didn't stand a chance against the prime sentinel not even cyclops could stop it what saved them this time around was cable coming from the future again with an advanced weapon to stop the sentinel gene then discovered that cable is is actually Nathan, Cyclops' son, but Cable wasn't in the mood for a family reunion. He just warned them about Bastion being the bigger threat and the person behind the Prime Sentinel. I love how they introduced Bastion in this episode. Like, bro is crazy. They started with him killing Garrick in the shadows, leaving us the audience wondering who he was. And then Cable warning the X Men about him. If that isn't a proper rollout, then I don't know what else is. This mini chit chat between Bastion and Sinister at the end of the episode was really insightful. It revealed his plans to spread the prime zombie sentinel among humans and if he actually succeeds, it's going to be so little guys. Sinister was angry at Bastion for revealing his big plans to the X-Men sooner than expected. He was worried that the X-Men will now find means to stop them before they carry out the plans but Bastion assured him that his plans are still intact. He was only just experimenting. I can't lie, Bastion is scary because his plans are massive. Bro has access to the satellites the X-Men used to communicate with the Shear Empire so he knows that Charles is alive and we also realize that he has Magneto in custody and that is worrisome because what is Bro cooking? <laughs> Bastion is a formidable villain if you ask me because he has all the materials, he has the looks and the presence and the voice acting is top notch like Theo James is doing a magnificent job voicing him and we also discovered that Bastion has had cameo appearances in almost all the episodes. This episode was just thrilling. I really appreciate the consistency in action and storytelling X-Men 97 has been going with so far. And at this point, I really can't wait for the last three episodes. It's going to be so epic. If you made it to this level of the video, you are the real MVP. I really, really appreciate you watching my videos. Please kindly like the video because it's going to boost it more in the algorithm and that way more viewers can see the video. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in my next video, I'm out of here.